Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop out here in the heavenly backyard garden where everything is in full bloom right now. Well, the daylilies are in full bloom. The dahlias are just beginning. And if you're interested in the garden, at the end of this video, I have a short little two minute music video of the garden if you want to take a look at that. That's at the end of the video. But right now, what I want to talk about is this rig here. This is my uh, CGX rig, which I usually have the uh, Celestron 11 inch edge telescope on, but I took that off. I'm, I'm doing some maintenance work on it, but also I wanted to put the uh, the ED80, a wider field view telescope, on this mount. And I was considering buying a new telescope with a wider field of view, but you know, <laughs> things aren't cheap anymore. But uh, also I wanted to get a new camera, which I did last uh, winter. I bought a new camera, the Topek uh, 24 Sky I, and it has a wider field of view built in with the camera. It's a full view camera with a very large pixel size of uh, something almost six uh, microns, 5.96, I think. Anyway, will it give me a wider field of view or do I need to buy a new telescope? This ED80 I bought back in 2019. I love this telescope, so I really don't want to buy a new one. So the test is, can I use the camera and the, uh, uh, the reducer with the uh, camera, with the telescope, uh, the uh, Orion 0.8X reducer, will that give me a wide enough field of view? Well, let's take a look at some of the results. Well, before I get into that, yeah, I, 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 I like reading some good books. Uh, usually I read nonfiction about, uh, well, the uh, universe and uh, global climate change and things like that. But also, I, I like reading some good science fiction at times. And if you ever saw the movie The Martian by Andy Weir, uh, I saw it you know, when it came out you know, several years ago, and I was so enthralled, I, I read the book. And the book was even better than the movie. Well, he has a new book out. Well, it's not really new. It's a couple of years old already called Project Hail Mary. I just read this book, and oh my gosh, I loved The, the Martian. This book is even better. Project Hail Mary. I understand now they're going to uh, make this into a movie coming up in 2026. Uh, the release date, scheduled release date. Anyway, if you want to read some good science fiction, not science fantasy, science fiction. Science fiction is a book or, or a fiction that uh, is, it hasn't happened, but it could happen. Versus science fantasy like Star Trek and Star Wars, uh, it's things that could happen but can't happen. For example, the transporter and the traveling at five times the speed of light and so forth and so on. Yeah, you may have views on that, but that's science fantasy. This is all science fiction, good science fiction. So, yeah, if, you, if you're interested in some good reading, if you, uh, particularly up in the northern latitudes where you're not getting much nighttime anyway, uh, this might be a good time to uh, pick up a good book. I recommend this book right here. All right, let's talk about the setup. Now, here's the camera situation right here. Here is the Topek uh, Sky Eye 24 camera right here. And uh, I have uh, it connected to my filter wheel. It's a five um, position filter wheel with the two inch filters. And on that, I have the L Pro, the Optolong L Pro, L Enhance, uh, L Ultimate, and the L uh, uh, Quad uh, filters. And, uh, and then I have a blank filter for, you know, no filter. Anyway, um, I also have on here the uh, focal reducer, 0.8x focal reducer, and I got the backspacing at 55 millimeters uh, set from the, uh, the lens here back to the sensor on the camera itself. And also I have other attachments to the camera, which I'm going to talk about in just a minute. Let's talk about the scope right now. It's the Orion ED80. It's a uh, 480 millimeter focal length telescope with an 80 millimeter refractor objective lens. It's a triplet and uh, I have this mounted on the CGX mount. Now I took the StarSense Auto Tracker off the Celestron and put it on this uh, rig right over here. So I'm still using the StarSense Auto Guider for guiding and I'm getting some fantastic guiding with this lighter payload uh, and the StarSense uh, Auto Guider. Uh, I, I had an image the other night I tested at 15 minutes and the stars were still round, so I was very happy about that. Most of my images, though, I used either 180 seconds or uh, uh, 300 seconds, five minutes, three minutes, or five minute exposure times uh, with the objectives. Now, the objectives uh, that I used 
was the uh, Lagoon Nebula. Uh, it's always fascinates me. There's some big trees over there, uh, but just between those two big trees is an opening in my southern sky, and there I can pick up the Lagoon Nebula for about a three hour period. That's about it. Uh, and it's now rising earlier and earlier in the morning uh, as we're looking more toward the Sagittarius arm of the Milky Way. And uh, it's well in, in, in the area of Sagittarius. And uh, it rises now about 1.30 in the morning. Uh, actually, it, it rises before that. It comes to that position over there uh, in the southern sky at about 1.30 in the morning. And I'm able to track it there for the three hours. So we're like 1.30 to about 4.30 or so thereabouts. Anyway, uh, that's what I'm using right here. Everything else is the same that I have from the, uh, uh, the other rig. I have the... Uh, uh, Pegasus Auto, uh, Pegasus Power Supply right over here. I have the Duder, the Duder. <laughs> I have the dew straps on the uh, the the uh, telescope and on the guider. On the guider, I also have the uh, UV IR cut filter on there. Uh, it was recommended that I use that, and sure enough, it does help with the guiding. If you have the, the option of putting a uh, IR filter or IR UV cut filter on there, go ahead and do that. It will probably give you a little bit better guiding at that. And some of the targets that I was using to experiment on the wider field of view, the Lagoon Nebula, Messier 8, and also nearby the Trifid Nebula, so I say Trifid, but I say Trifid because it's three, uh, which is Messier, Messier 20, uh, which is just uh, nearby. And also I was looking at a Messier 100, that's a spiral galaxy of, well, I think, 55 million light years away. Uh, anyway, I wanted to get a wider field view of that and see if I could pick up some of those other galaxies that are in that family out in that area there. And also one of my favorite targets, it's rising uh, just as the lagoon was setting. Uh, this was rising. That's a uh, uh, helicopter. I'm not too far away from the uh, Army Air Base over here, Hunter Army Airfield. Anyway, the other target I was looking at was one of my favorites, the North American. Uh, the North America Nebula uh, NGC 7000. And uh, I was able to get a good chunk of that with the regular camera. The ones I used to be using was the uh, ZWO 071 camera. And that's a great camera. Uh, but anyway, I was looking at the, the North America Nebula with this setup here, and yeah, it looks pretty good. So finally I started the testing and I had a clear night. The moon was now out of the way. I had everything set up. I had to put it on autopilot because again at this time, this was earlier in May and the target was rising at about 2.30 to 3 o'clock in the morning. So I put this on autopilot and used Nina to schedule to start the recording at that time when the target came into view. And everything was great. The sky was clear, uh, the atmosphere was calm. and has this ever happened to you even with a dew heater i live in a very humid environment here and even with the dew heater on at full blast look what happened all right here's the situation look at this picture here under the ideal conditions of the sky everything was going in my favor look at this this was ice and fog on the lens of the camera and I had the camera right here. This is it right here. I had the uh, dew heater on and it's still iced up. A lot of humidity here in Savannah. So I added to this device I found from a Gina Astro. Uh, it's called a dew heater strip kit and uh, anti-dew heater strip. That's it, a little kit. And uh, it comes with this little nice little uh, heater uh, right here. And you just simply attach it to your scope, uh, your um, camera. Uh, with an added adhesive right there. Now I got this uh, device on right here, uh, uh, a converter from N48 to N54. I can't get it off. Another nice little tool. This little tool here, also from a Gina Astro. I can use it to uh, take the little pins right here, go right into the, see those little holes right there? Uh, you can just slip these in there nice and easily. And this is adjustable and just easily <laughs> takes it off. Um, so many times I had these things caught on that I didn't know how to get them off without stripping the uh, uh, threads using a vise or something else. 
but this takes it right off all right and then there you just put this onto here there's a little adhesive on the back of that you just set it up right there just uh, cement it on or you know stick it on uh, right like that and you have this device coming off well you want to strap that on so it doesn't you get ripped off and well they supply it with uh, a couple of uh, twist ties and zip ties where you call it and these zip ties I just go around and uh, lock it on there you just uh, set it up and so forth and like I have right on this camera here can't see it too much because I have black on black also I use just a little rubber band to um, hook the uh, cable from the uh, filter wheel back into my camera because it did was uh, it's not quite short enough it's a little bit too long and it did catch the wheel uh, or one of the knobs on my mount the other night almost pulled the camera right apart so I, I just by putting a little rubber band on there helped solve that situation very quickly so also with this you get this power supply button or not button but cable right here it's a splitter uh, 12 volt this thing runs on 12 volts there it is uh, you plug this uh, into your 12 volt supply coming off your uh, uh, your system whatever you're using I use the Pegasus uh, power hub and it goes onto the camera itself and uh, uh, you plug it into your camera and then you plug the uh, the splitter one goes into the uh, this goes right here into the system right here uh, your 12 volt supply one goes into the uh, heater strip and the other one goes into your camera so you, it's all done real nice and easy so that that problem is solved so there you have it um, a couple devices found on a Gina Astro these also on the other side you have these uh, uh, threads uh, of uh, straight line so if you have a uh, system like this where you got I can't get this thing out of here but you just take the uh, adjustment here uh, you can adjust it and there's little slots in there and these have the little uh, uh, like almost flathead screwdriver types you just line it up and in bingo comes right out there you have it and this little spacer not spacer um, from M54 to M48 um, device here. That's how you can get them out. So this little tool has really saved me a lot of headaches and kept me from cursing a lot. So this is a nice little tool here. These aren't all that expensive. They're like 20 bucks, 20 bucks, 20, $29, something like that. But it's well worth it. Okay. And then when you look at the picture here, uh, after I put the dew heater on, this is the device. No ice over there in the middle. So it was nice and clean. And there's the, the, the Lagoon Nebula. All right, let's talk about this. Uh, let's look at the, um, the uh, Lagoon. This is what the raw picture looks like when you uh, bring it in from the camera without uh, any flats or anything. This is the raw picture. Quite a bit of uh, vignetting going on uh, with this but with the use of flats it takes it right out also with gradient exterminator or with the uh, gradient uh, correction tools you can get rid of this but also if you just use flats uh, it'll take that uh, right on out let's take a look at here uh, there's an image uh, without the um, uh, without cropping that I used of the lagoon now but this is with the uh, um, the Optolong L enhance filter that's what it was and there you can see some uh it did the uh, meridian flip there so we had some uh, uh stacking artifacts there and then uh looking at it after being cropped uh, let's bring it onto a larger screen there there you have it right there and um what's this one right here okay this is the one i had before i had this larger full frame view camera the uh, topec I believe this is was the ASI 071 but there you can see um, that picture there this is back in the year 2020 and that's a good looking picture but I can barely get the uh, trifid nebula in with the, the lagoon nebula so there it is with the this view here same camera I mean same telescope different camera also I had the reducer on this uh, to give you this nice wide field of view what else do I have here uh, let's just close these down and uh, I have get off I have uh, the uh, North America North America nebula right there uh, this is the unprocessed file this is a little bit more processed here 
they can see the, it, it, you, you get the whole view of the North America Nebula, and you also get the Pelican Nebula over here. Uh, all kinds of, you know, wide field of view with this uh, uh, system that I have set up on the using the ED80 and the uh, 0.8x reducer and the Topek uh, full frame camera. Here's a uh, HA picture of the Crescent Nebula I took with the EON. Um, 130 millimeter refractor telescope. This is with the Player One Poseidon camera and, and the monochrome. And this was the HA of the Crescent Nebula. And looking at the uh, same target with the Topek camera and the ED80 with the 0.8x reducer. This is unprocessed. I didn't uh, process it yet or anything, but this is the raw image here. Uh, there you can see how much smaller it is. Well, yeah, because I, I have a much wider field of view. So, you know, that really makes it nice. Well, there you have it. I bought the new camera. The camera was not cheap, but I didn't have to buy a new telescope because it worked. I'm getting the wider field of view that I wanted to get, but I was just barely uh, on the edge of getting it before I bought this full frame camera. And uh, now uh, I'm still going to use this telescope. The Orion ED80 is a great little telescope. There's some good ones out there, you know, newer ones that are available, but uh, this one has turned out really, really great uh, with this camera setup. And, uh, you know, I, I would like to, you know, thank everybody who has been watching and supporting my channel. And uh, there you can see the list of, uh, no, I have it over here. <laughs> so thank you, thank you very much. It helps to keep this channel up and running by your support. And also, if you would like, leave it, your comments below. That also helps with the, uh, uh, the discovery of this channel. And if you like the uh, video, hit the like button. Sure enough, if you don't like it, don't hit the like button. But if you like it, hit the like button. And uh, you can also buy me a cup of coffee. Uh, I always love my cup of coffee. Or you can join my Patreon page uh, to help with the support of this channel. But anyway, you know, the uh, spiral arms of the Milky Way are starting to come back into view as we swing around from looking out of the galaxy toward the outer limits of space, toward the inner portion of the galaxy. As we look back into the galaxy, we start seeing more nebulosity. And we're going to be seeing a lot of nebulosity coming up uh, in the next several months. Thanks for watching and remember, unless you need rain, and I, I got the sprinklers on right now in the heavenly backyard garden, but unless you need rain, clear skies everyone. And don't forget at the end, coming right after this, I got a video, well I'm going to show some of the pictures right here from the camera, and then a short music video of the heavenly backyard garden. So enjoy the views. Thanks for watching.